Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome back to the board meeting. Today, we're doing another top 10 list. Today's top 10 list centers around my top 10 Zen games. Now, to be a Zen game, I had a few criteria I was looking at. What do I mean when I'm talking about Zen games? Well, first off, the game basically has to have zero stress. It can't be stressing me out in pretty much any way possible. If it did, if it had a, uh, some things in the game that made me stressed or worried, I took that off this list. So yeah, uh, no stress. One thing uh, that stresses me out is if heavy rule sets. So all of these games, ex with the exception of one, is going to be lighter to medium games. Because if you don't have to worry about rules, that kind of takes a whole stress element out of the game because if the if the rule set is one page long you're not stressed at the rules at all uh, another thing the themes of games are can uh, help if the themes are very relaxing themes that kind of helps you put get in that zen feeling um, also simple looking games uh, like elegant looking games there's not like a big cluster there's there's not it doesn't look hectic the games that are just look simple and elegant that really helped if to make this list as well um one thing these are these are all games that actually i don't care if i win or lose which i don't really care at all for other games either but for these games especially, I don't care if I'm in first place or last place, if I score a thousand points or I score one point. These are games that the outcome of the game will not dictate at all what I think about uh, Think about the game. Like I said, it doesn't really matter most of the time, but these ones especially. Uh, I had to remake this list twice. Or I had to remake this list once, I should say. And... Why? Because I made this list, and then I realized, while I was going through it, that 9 out of those 10 games were solo-only games. So you know what I found out that stresses me? Peoples. People stress me out, apparently. So I, I redid the list so that I had more uh, multiplayer games as well. So now I think I've got, what is it? I think like 5 multiplayer games and 5 solo games on here now. So that it, it evened it out a little bit. Uh, I didn't want to just have solo-only games. Because there's a lot of people who don't play solo games. I, I play a lot of solo games, but I didn't want to exclude them, basically, uh, from this list. Uh, one honorable mention that I have is the game Under Falling Skies. It didn't make my list. It was close. Uh, Under Falling Skies is basically Space Invaders, the board game. And this that's a solo-only game where there's this mothership that's moving slowly down towards your base trying to crush humanity, basically. Uh, why it didn't make the list, even though it puts me in that zen feeling, is because there's some stress in that game when you're rolling dice. Like, you need to roll a particular set of numbers from these dice in order to win. And it is also a game that I care if I win or lose. I'm trying really hard to win or lose. Win. I'm not trying to win or lose. I'm trying to win. So I'm stressed out trying for these dice. But other than that, it gets me, it gets me that zen moment, but I am stressed during that game. So it didn't make the list quite. So let's go to our actual list, starting with number 10. Number 10 is parks. Now this is a theme of basically you're visiting national parks. And there's this track, and you're going to be moving your traveler as far along that track as you would like. And the theme is really made me, ma uh, it made it this list. Uh, the theme, and it just looks beautiful, it's elegant looking. And you're taking pictures along your, your route as a traveler of these national parks. It is my least favorite game on this list. And that's why it made number 10. But there's no denying the the theme of this is really... It's really zen-like. And uh, this isn't the only nature-based game. That's what I found out. Uh, nature is very zen-like for myself. Uh, yeah, so number 10, parks. Going to number 9... Number nine is a small game. This is Herbaceous. You can play this multiplayer, but I much prefer to play this as a solo game. And in Herbaceous, this is your a push-your-luck sort of drafting game, which push-your-luck games aren't usually 
zen like they're usually kind of stressful but in this game it, it doesn't really matter too much but you are trying to collect sets of different herbs you're trying to and you're trying to complete certain objectives like have so many of the same herb or have so many different uh variety of herbs and it's this push your luck game where you're collecting these herbs and putting them in jars and and you score points at the end of the game. A lot of times I play this game and I don't even score at the end because I just don't care. But I, I like the mechanics of it all and the cards, these herb cards are very beautifully illustrated. Really good game. Going to number eight now. Number eight is the smallest game on this list. This is another, this is a solo only game. This is Orchard, a nine card solitaire game. And which is the weirdest title ever for a game, but I always just call it Orchard. In Orchard, you have nine cards, and they all have these trees on them. They have nine trees on them. And basically, you're going to be trying to overlap cards onto each other, trying to overlap the same colored trees on other types of trees. If you overlap them, you score, you put dice on them, and you're trying to overlap them again to move those dice even to a higher point value and overlap them again to even put it even higher value. And it's just a very simple, very fast game that I really like. This is my bedtime game, I would say. If I, I've got 10, 15 minutes before I want to really go lay down, I'll break this one out quick and play it. And it's I can score two points in this game where I can score 40. It doesn't matter for this game at all to me. I just want to play this game, which is sort of this simple puzzle sort of game. Uh, yeah, number eight, Orchard. Going to number seven. Number seven is Village Green. Now, this is sort of this grid game. On the top of the grid is going to be these uh, scoring objectives that you have. And on the side are going to also be these scoring objective cards. And now you're going to try to put these... These cards in the middle of them, or to the side and below them, in order to score points. And these cards have uh, trees on them, they have statues, they have plants, I believe. And you're trying to put those cards in a column that will score points for that particular card. But along that, there's also the you're going to be scoring for the row as well. So trying to match those up. A uh, very good looking game. Another simple but fun game. Going to number six. Number six is a theme I really like. This is Coffee Roaster. I am a coffee person. And in this game, this is a bag building game for... It's another solo only game. Uh, you're going to try to, to be brewing your perfect cup of coffee. And you have a bag full of these beans. These different valued beans. And you're trying to eliminate some of these beans basically to... Uh, make the perfect cup of coffee for that scenario. There's a bunch of different scenarios in each scenario trying to make this specific cup of coffee. Uh, I I had my bedtime game with Orchard, and now I have my morning time game with Coffee Roaster. I like to play this game in the morning. I'll play it, and I'll be drinking coffee at the same time. Very simple game, but it can be thinky of how you're trying to best build your bag in order to build that that cup, the perfect cup of coffee for you. So this is one that the theme really, really works for me. I like this. In the, it's my morning time game, like I said. So number six, Coffee Roaster. Going to number five, another solo only game. I promise this is the last solo only game. This is Cristallo. Cristallo is this game where you're going to have these cards and you're trying to lay these cards out. And like Orchard, you can overlap these cards on top of each other. But you are trying to sort of put these cards in a manner that makes them have three crystals and then one gem. And then you will unlock that gem of an animal. You're trying to rescue all these animals and you each animal will have three gems on them. So you're trying to play all these cards in order to take off all the gems of these animals. And if you do that, which isn't the easiest thing, then you go on to fight this dragon. Uh, I have never beaten the dragon, but I've beaten, I've rescued all the animals plenty of times before, but beating the dragon is very, very hard. But I don't really care if I beat it or win or lose. I just like the puzzle of trying to lay out your cards on top of each other in order to unlock these gems and everything. Really neat game. One game that has really, really grown on me. 
I almost got rid of this game, then I decided to play it again. And now I play it all the time. It's a fun little solo game that takes doesn't take a lot of time. And actually, all of these games are less than one hour games. Uh, this one's probably, you know, a 20 minute, 20 to 30 minute game, Cristalo is. Going to number four, number four is a multiplayer game. This is Splendor. This is a very popular game. Uh, the, there's not really a theme in this game. It's kind of abstract, but you are going to have these basically poker chips, which are gems. And you are going to collect these gems in order to buy these cards that have gems on them as well. And those cards will add to your gem stack automatically. And the, those cards will allow you to buy more expensive gems. And the more expensive gems will have points on them. And the person who scores the most gets to a certain amount of points wins the game. And this is this is one of these, uh, it's very a uh, social game. Because I'm not really thinking about the game much while I'm playing this. But it's just very, very simple. It's, you don't have to pay too much attention. You're like, okay, I need, um a red gem and a green gem so and while other people are taking the turns you're like you know, you already know what you're do gonna do so now you can talk and socialize with other people when it comes to your turn you're like okay yep I'm taking that very fast turns fun game I like it a lot kinda gets some some crap everybody doesn't not everybody likes it but I enjoy the game so number four is Splendor number three is a simple card drafting game called Ohanami. Now in Ohanami the cards are labeled 1 through 120 and you, on each there's three rounds and each round you are going to be given 10 cards and you are going to take two of those cards lay them down in front of you and you can lay them in one of three columns. So you're gonna lay those down and pass the rest and you're drafting all of the cards till the end of the round. And you, like I said, you have three columns that you can place these cards in, and you are trying to lay these cards in a manner that you're going to... How would I describe? This is a weird, weird game. Uh, but basically, you if you put two cards on a column, you can't put any cards that are in between those numbers in them. You either have to put the card on the very bottom or the very top, and they have to go in ascending order. Uh, you can't just put your... Uh, a 36 on the bottom and then put a 50 below that they ha it would have to go on the top but sometimes you can't place them there but it's a very simple game and you're going to score for different cards each round fun game I like it a lot and it's drafting which is is not usually very uh stress-free it's not a Zen type thing but in this one it's just I don't care and it's it's not very difficult to draft correctly you just it's it's fun though. I I like this game. I know I didn't explain it very good, but it's it's a very good, simple, beautifully illustrated game. Fun game. Going to number two. Number two is a two-player only game. Now this is Onitama. Now Onitama is sort of like this chess-like game, and it said it's a two-player only game, and you have your pawn set up on this playmat. It comes with a playmat automatically, which uh, automatically makes me like it more when I have a playmat for a game. But you have these two cards that are on your side, and those cards will dictate how you can move your pawns. So once you decide, oh, I'm going to move my pawn like this card can shows me that I can, that card actually goes into the middle, and you take a card that was in the middle and put it on your side. Now your opponent has cards on their side as well, and you can see them. It's all 100% open information games. And people say, my, my, that's not very stress-free. To me, it's stress-free because I know exactly how my opponent can move. Nothing is going to surprise me unless I misjudged something. So I know I can put my person here and they're, they're safe from your, your pawns for this turn. So it's just kind of puzzling how I can best avoid getting captured and capture my opponents as well. It's a fun game. One of my favorite two-player only games. Going to number one, and number one is, all these other games were simple game. I would say light, maybe light to medium games. This one is a heavier game. This is the heaviest uh, flipping right or rolling right game that I know of. This is Hadrian's Wall. 
And this is a very combo-y game. There are two pages worth of things that you can do, which is crazy for a flip and write game. There's hundreds of different boxes you can check off. But in this game, you are going to be getting some kind of resource and then using that resource to check off another box. But that box might get you another different resource, which then you'll go to another box and mark that off. And then that will get you a resource. And it's very combo-y. And you're going to play several rounds of this. And why it's zen-like for me, because this is, this is, I'm not stressed at all when I'm playing this game. I'm just trying to puzzle out how to best do my puzzle. And this is one of those games that it, it takes probably an hour to play, but that hour goes by like that. There, I, I'll start doing my puzzle, and then I'll look up, and I'm done. And it's been an hour. And I'm like, oh, wow. But it's a great game. But it is heavier. But it definitely... I'm not stressed at all when I'm playing the game. I'm in the zen uh, mode, where I just don't care about anything. I'm it just focused. So yes, number one is Hadrian's Wall, and that is my entire list. I'd love to hear from you guys. What some of your favorite uh, zen-like games? What are your games that give you that zen feeling? Just let me know in the comments below. But that will complete this video, so if you did enjoy this, make sure to like and subscribe to see more weekly content from me, Shane, at the board meeting in the future. Hope you all have an amazing day. Take care, everyone.